the study done in a smaller country, New Zealand, where scientific oversight, where the resources for scientific oversight are not as uh, readily available as in some of the larger countries. And the New Zealand's, the conclusion was, because they manipulated the data, was that EDTA didn't work. But if you look at the raw data, which in this case we did have access to, we find that using the ankle arm Doppler blood pressure index, which is a measure of improved blood flow or lack of improvement to the legs, and using the pulsatility index in the artery of the worst leg, that the improvement in the EDTA group was more than in the placebo group, and the, and the chances that this difference, that this improvement could have been just random chance rather than caused by the EDTA was less than one in a, in a hundred, less than one percent chance that this improvement could be random probability. And that is considered quite significant in a scientific study. In other words, it was a positive study. It was in a mainstream medical journal. Everybody looks at it, reads the summary. The summary said it doesn't work. So they say EDTA has been disproven in a double-blind control study, and it doesn't work. It's a lie. Their study showed that it does work. The fourth study was not published. It was presented from the podium in Australia at an atherosclerosis meeting. It was done in Heidelberg, Germany. The end result of the study was that patients who got EDTA improved their walking distance by 400% after the treatment, where well, those who got the placebo was less than 70%. And the placebo was not a real placebo, it was an active drug. It was a drug used in Europe called Bencyclan. This is in line with what most physicians find who do EDTA chelation therapy, and that is that the average improvement in walking distance in patients who suffer blockage to their legs is about 400%. If they can walk one block before treatment, it's four blocks after. Some get totally relieved of symptoms, some get no benefit, nothing's 100%. But on the average, it's a 400% increase. This study was never published, but when it was presented from the podium, what the researchers did was they threw out all the patients who got completely well and could walk two kilometers without leg pain. They used a statistical trick. They said, these are outliers. They're so much, so far off the curve that we can just disregard them as being flukes and not significant. <laughs> and they did it. <laughs> uh, some of the doctors that were involved in the research were, were very upset at that, at the, at the ethics and dishonesty of it. And so they brought the raw data to the United States and shared it with, the, with us doctors in the American College for Advancement in Medicine. So we did have access to the data. We could put, it, put, the, put the, the subjects, the patients back in who did the best, and that's what the results showed, what I just told you. When it was presented from the podium, of course, they said it was only a 70% improvement in the placebo and a 70% improvement in the EDTA patients, therefore it, it's no good. This is scientific dishonesty of the highest order. These studies don't prove anything, and the data is actually positive. Now, I'll go into my slides. Everybody see okay? Uh, this is the life, these are the lifestyle factors that we're, that we're looking for an antidote for. <laughs> the couch potatoes, the smoking and eating their uh, pizza and smoking their cigars and drinking their uh, whatever it is and the overflowing ashtrays. We can even help people like this. <laughs> Doesn't last as long, but <laughs> we like to get them to modify their lifestyle. Uh, you all know that uh, chelation is, is, a, is an intravenous treatment given over three to four hours, uh, usually in a physician's office. They, they won't let us do it in the hospitals in the United States. Um, I'll just quickly summarize some of the studies that are positive that were refused indexing in the computerized database. They were actually censored out. I mean, this is editorial censorship. Uh, this study was done by Dr. Olzewer in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, with, uh, with Dr. Carter. Dr. Carter is a prof full professor and uh, chairman of a department at the Tulane University Medical School in New Orleans. 
It was a 28-month study, 2,800 patients. They all had documented uh, atherosclerosis, and this is just a quick summary of the results. 77% had marked improvement who had heart disease, 17, another 17% had good improvement. Those with blockage to the legs, so-called claudication, 90% marked improvement, 8% good improvement. Uh, cerebral vascular disease, Alzheimer's, uh, dementia and strokes, not nearly as good percentage-wise because once brain cells are lost, there's nothing that will bring them back. These patients do much better if you treat them early before they have uh, uh, major brain impairment. But still, even in these patients, there was 25 to 30 percent improvement. So they're well, well worth treating, especially if you can get them early. Uh, scleroderma, not much published on this, but I've treated uh, a number of patients myself. There's nothing better. There's absolutely nothing better. It's, it's really criminal not to treat scleroderma with EDTA intravenously. Uh, doc, these two doctors reported a 75% marked improvement, and even the remaining 25% had good improvement. Overall, 75% uh, with vascular disease, with blockage to blood vessels, uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease had marked improvement, and 89% of all treated patients had marked a good improvement regardless of what was wrong with them. <clears throat> now this, uh, another study, again, censored out of the Index Medicus, so if you do a computerized search, you won't find these studies. Uh, this was done by Dr. Kasdorf, who uh, was assistant clinical professor of medicine at a medical school in California when, when this was done. Uh, he took a series of patients and measured using radioisotope the blood flow to their brains, and all of these patients had impaired brain function from uh, blockage to blood flow. Uh, the same sort of thing that leads to strokes or little strokes or senility. And because the data is so dramatic that even without a, a, a sophisticated scientific uh, background, you don't have to have gone to medical school to, to see the benefit that, that were measured here in all of these patients. The technique used was to inject in a vein uh, an isotope, or a very short life radioactive isotope, and this, uh, this instrument under the patient's head is a scintillation camera that takes a picture of the brain and it goes to a computer and the readouts that you're going to see in a minute were computed on that instrument you just saw and this is kind of what shows the this, this redness is the radioactivity coming up through the carotid arteries each one of these is about a quarter of a second apart as we go across here here the blood is throughout the brain then it collects in the central venous sinus is more diffuse in the brain, and then it drains back down into the back through the heart, uh, with a little bit still pooled in the in the in the brain. A little bit still stays in there. When that's converted on a computer into a curve, what we see is an upsweep here, as the radioactivity goes into the brain through the carotid arteries. This is the amount of time it takes. Time across the bottom, blood flow as it goes in, measured by radioactivity going up here, a peak. And then it washes out, goes back through the body, through the heart, through the lungs, and back into the brain once more with a second sweep. By then, it's been diluted down in the, in the body's total circulation, and so it, it just goes back to a baseline here. Now, what happens with blocked blood flow, with, with plaque in the arteries and narrowed arteries from, from aging and atherosclerosis, is that the time it takes to flow in is delayed, and the outflow is delayed. And this would be a moderately abnormal tracing, and this would be a very abnormal tracing. And what we're going to see here, this is a normal left, right side of the brain, left side of the brain on a normal person. In, out, second sweep, baseline. This, this is raw data. This is actual data, okay? Now, you can see here, this is a 51-year-old a uh, person who uh, w actually was diagnosed with schizophrenia, but they got better with chelation. They didn't have, this person didn't have schizophrenia, had blockage to blood flow, had atherosclerosis. You can see that the, the time it took for the blood to flow in here is quite a bit longer than it is after chelation. This is after 13 IVs of EDTA, and the blood flow comes out much more rapidly. This is before, this is after. Now, is there anybody here that can't see that difference? 
Do you need to have a double-blind control study? Do you need to have statistics? I mean, <laughs> and I'm just going to quickly flip through a number of these patients to show you, and, and these aren't selected. These are all published. Everyone is published, and they all showed the same pattern. <clears throat> This is a 72-year-old man with the cerebral atrophy, the brain, he, he was getting senile and his brain was shrunk on, on CAT scan. And you can see that greatly slowed inflow and greatly slowed outflow. Here after uh, 26 chelations, it's coming back toward normal, not normal by any means, but he improved clinically while this test improved. This is a 62-year-old person who had, uh, was having little strokes, TIAs. Uh, this is before, this is after. An obvious improvement. The peak here is closer to the baseline, meaning it, this distance is much shorter, meaning that the blood flows in a lot faster and it flows out a lot faster. This is solid, objective, evidence that EDTA chelation therapy improves blood flow. Now, why won't they accept that? Is there anyone here that thinks that placebo effect could do this? The or hypnotism could do this? I know the answer. Is, uh, it's, it's a rhetorical question. <laughs> you can't control population that way. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to quickly flip through them. You can see here's a uh, a 66-year-old uh, diabetic with uh, hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis, before treatment, after 13 treatments, and after 20 treatments. You see this progressive improvement, almost normal here after 20 treatments. And remember, all of these patients improve clinically. This is a uh, 76-year-old, again, with uh, cerebral atrophy and becoming senile, uh, before and after. Not quite as dramatic an improvement, but definitely an improvement. Uh, this is a 92-year-old person, extremely abnormal, greatly delayed inflow. After uh, six treatments, already starting to improve. After 20 treatments, coming back toward normal, probably will never be normal no matter how many treatments he gets, but objective change. I mean, this... This is not how do you feel. This is not anything that could be caused by placebo. This is blood flow measurements. And based on, on all of my experience and that of many other doctors, if he'd continued on for 20 or 30 treatments, this would have continued to improve. Now, the hallmark of good scientific research is that it can be duplicated by another researcher in a different center that's not connected, preferably using a different technology to see if he gets the same results. These data were, were, were duplicated that way. Dr. McDonough and Rudolph in Kansas City used a little uh, pressure device on the eyeball that measures the blood pressure in the artery that comes in from the brain, the ophthalmic artery, which is really an extension of the carotid artery. And using, again, using a computer, it's possible to compute the degree of blockage in the blood flow coming to the brain using these measurements. To summarize just quickly, the, the patients were divided into three uh, groups. Uh, the percentage blockage before and after. Well, let's just look at the worst one. 32% uh, 32 percent blockage of the carotid arteries on this is an average now in uh, 18 patients before treatment, it improved to only 17% blockage. In other words, the degree of plaque blockage is almost is about half as much afterwards. The ones that were intermediate, 31% before, went to 9%. There were 19 patients in that group. Uh, the patients that weren't quite as bad initially were much better at the end. They went down from 23% to 5%. Again, an objective measurement that in no way, at least in my belief system, could these types of measurements be uh, created with placebo effect or suggestion or hypnosis or whatever, whatever you want to call it. These are before and after measurements of improved blood flow, and the only thing that was done was the program of EDTA chelation therapy before and after. Uh, Dr. McDonough did another study measuring the blood pressure in the arm, comparing it with the leg. Normally the blood pressure...